goes. What's this? Which fatty chicken sat on that and it fell off, huh? Which fatty chicken was it? Girls have been having a rave overnight. They've trashed their house. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the fourth year of Plot 37 being on YouTube. Yes! Always bright. And it's April, which is an excellent time to start a new year. And April is an absolutely nuts month for sewing. It's like the sewing month of the year, I think. And this morning I was going to start with exactly that. I was going to get my courgettes in. Courgettes, cucumbers, normal uh, normal time cucumbers and pumpkins this morning and my chocha and all those sort of things um, but I set to it this morning and realised I didn't have any compost. Brilliant! So we're doing it in reverse and we're up here first and so I'm going to talk about things that you can direct sow in April. Seems that's what I'm going to be doing this morning and I'm going to start with carrots. <laughs> So the compost that we've got filling this bed is the Rocket Grow uh, multi-purpose with John Innes. And it's quite, I wouldn't say rough exactly, but it's not, um, it's not a smooth compost. And obviously the carrot seedlings are gonna want something like proper smooth. So what I'm, I've just pushed that channel in. So it's got a nice little curve in it. And I'm gonna fill that with the Rocket Grow seed and cutting compost and then sow the seeds into that and hope that gives them a really good start. I haven't actually had a look at the seed and cutting compost yet, so I'm hoping that's the kind of compost it's gonna be like super fine. Gonna test out three years of Cheers cutting action now. We tried the digging action yesterday. It's cutting action now. about it actually being fine there's a lot of bits in there but we're going to give it a go and see how that works for the carrot seedlings so I'm just going to fill that little run that I've made with this pat it down give it another good water and then sow the seed directly into that so when I say it's bitty, what I mean is it's quite fibrous, like often seed and cutting compost is really, really fine, like it's been sieved out. And this is just a bit chewy, I suppose is the right term. So as you know, I got given a whole load of different Rocket Grow composts, which is why we're testing them all out on the plot at the moment. So fingers crossed, my carrots are happy. So the carrot variety that I normally grow every year is a carrot called Touchant, which is just a fab carrot. And we normally have really, really good success with it, but our seed is old. And last year I had really sporadic germination. And I mean, I could just buy some more of it, but the thing is, is we've got 14 other varieties of carrot seed, you know, ones that have been given to me and stuff. So I've decided I'm gonna go off the Touchant this year and we're gonna try out some other ones. And the two we've decided to go with are Volcano, and top weight is it top weight yeah so we decided we were going to choose one each i chose volcano not sure why it was calling to me i don't know whether that's just because i've just come back from mount vesuvius <laughs> uh, i'm feeling very volcanic 
Um, so I'm going to do that one. Well, I'm going to do them both, but a mum has chosen, sorry, that's not very convenient, is it? I'll put that on my knee. <laughs> uh, mum has chosen one called Top Weight. Now these are both free seed that we've been given, um, DT Browns and Mr. Fothergills. But this one says it's Australia's most popular variety. So mum's chosen that one. And Volcanic says extremely strong, reliable and tasty. So let's hope they are worthy of uh, replacing Touchon. So I'm gonna get them in the ground there. And I'm also gonna throw some coriander in the line between them because the coriander grows brilliantly with carrots and also grows so lush under that EnviroMesh box. So, right. Whew. So this is the first uh, sowing of carrots this year. We will be doing another two sets of sowing. So hopefully we'll be able to get through six of those varieties <laughs> before the season is out. When sowing carrots, it's really tempting to sow them quite thick. And that's brilliant if you're good at thinning. I am not good at thinning. I have good intentions of it every year and I'm just not that great. So I'm sowing these super sparingly in the hope that I'm not going to end up with carrot hedge like I did last year. The first two rows I did last year, I was really diligent, thinned them all out perfectly, and I got some excellent carrots. The next two sowings that I made, I just never really got into the whole thinning thing, and uh, inevitably I had terrible carrots the second two sowings. So, lesson learned, I'm sowing very, very thinly. Also, because the carrot seed is so fine, and this compost, like I said earlier, is a little bit fibrous. I'm going to sieve over the top so that it's really, really nice and fine. And then give it a really good water. One of the real keys to getting carrot seed and parsnip seed actually to germinate is to make sure that they don't dry out. And because they're such fine seed and in fine soil, they do tend to dry out really quickly. One of the techniques people use often is they sow their seed and then they put a wooden board over the top of it just to hold that moisture until they're germinated. Obviously, you then have to lift the board off quite quickly because you can't have carrots growing under a wooden board. But it does really help with the germination. I'm hoping that by putting the EnviroMesh box over these, it's going to stop the wind, you know, ripping the moisture out of the soil. And it's just going to keep it that bit more moist. And I've just got to remember that every time I'm up here to give it another soaking because it's easy. Once you put a box over the top of it, it's easy to forget about it. So as well as the carrots and the coriander that I've just sown, there's quite a few things that you can get out straight into the ground at the moment. Some things require the soil to be a little bit warmer. So where I am, I've got really sandy soil. And so by now, like first week in April, we've actually warmed up quite a lot because the sandy soil warms up much faster than say the really heavy clay soil, which can take a bit of time. And also being right down in the south of England, it's quite warm here. So things that we could get into the ground now would be peas and broad beans. Uh, both of which you can direct sow, although sowing them this early straight into the ground, they do need a bit of protection because things are quite hungry at the moment and they tend to just come and dig them up like mice, squirrels and stuff. So, so I will actually be starting my spring sowing broad beans in the greenhouse. But theoretically, I could just put them straight in the ground if I was going to protect them. Same with the peas. And other things you can get into the ground at the moment are you can direct sow beetroot, spring onions, chard, spinach, leeks, Parsley can be direct sown outside about now. Coriander I've planted straight out earlier because it's under that EnviroMesh and that uh, just has a miracle effect on things. It seems to be able to cope with a lot, like a lot of stuff which died just out this winter. Uh, everything survived underneath the EnviroMesh. You saw my Lucullus chard and also my um, mustard greens and pak choy, the ones that weren't under the EnviroMesh all perished, but the ones that are under the EnviroMesh are fine. So I'm quite confident sowing my carrots and coriander under that this early. But likewise with the things like the beetroot, the spring onions, all those kind of things that you can group sow. Um, I've started them in modules in the greenhouse. I started them last month. So I'll be planting them out probably at the end of this month and sowing some more direct at that time. Don't even bother starting carrots um, in seed trays and trying to transplant them. It just doesn't work in my experience. And you know when you go to the garden centre and they've got trays of exciting veg, never be tempted by the trays of carrots because it doesn't work. Just direct sow them and hope for the best because when you try and transplant them, they just, yeah, those tap roots, they just end up all twisted and you won't get any carrots. That's my experience anyway. And two other things that you can direct sow right now, straight outside, is the charming radish and also some rocket. And I'm going to get both of them in now. So I don't know if you remember last week when we did the great onion shuffle, 
Uh, I left a bit of space at the end of this bed and I'm gonna put two rows of radishes straight in here. Radishes are not fussy creatures. I'm not doing anything extra to this bed at all. The two varieties that I'm going to sow are viola. I have never grown this variety before, but it looks absolutely beautiful. And a French breakfast style radish, flamboyant three. I've got to admit to having not really got the radish previously. <laughs> it's just a bit one of those things. It's super easy to grow. And everybody's like, oh, we've got to get your radishes in now. And I just sort of, I missed the point of them. But the last couple of years, I've really kind of got myself in tune with what a radish can be. And I think that's to do with, I've sort of started eating them a lot more fresh on the plot, you know, just when we're up here. And because we've been eating lunches up here and things, we just add them to a salad when they're fresh and they're absolutely majestic. Because what I was doing before is I'd pick them, put them in the basket, take them home. And by the time I got them home, they were just a bit sad and soft and they lose their vibrancy so quickly. I've discovered since that actually if you store them in water, if you bring like a jar of water up or whatever and just keep them in a jar of water when you're taking them home, that does keep them really fresh. But yeah, I'm now, I'm now a fan of radishes, I've got to admit. And there's just so many different varieties. Yeah, I am now a radish fan. And once I've got these in, um, it is also an excellent time of year to be getting your potatoes in. My early potatoes, which were the Red Duke and the Home Guard, uh, all went into one of the raised beds and they are all starting to come up now, which is satisfying. They went in last month. And now we are getting the second earlies and the main crops planted up. They're all being grown in pots this year. Well, I've got a lot of things like the Serinthi. Yeah. I was thinking would be lovely in pots and then yeah, you know, just go on the plastic. Yeah, exactly. So which ones are we going to do first? Who have we got? Right, we've got. Yeah, the other other one's definitely second early and main crop. just your standard big boy brassicas that are producing tops at the moment these are the last of the turnips that we never got round to picking last year and they're now producing beautiful sprouts for us as well That is a bit stronger than it was before and as you can see girlie's clearly approved because somebody has already been up there i think it's time to head off Yeah, last chance. We're not in a hurry with that. That might be a job for next week. 
big, okay? We've still got the other thing we've still got to do is the potatoes. Yep. I think um, sometime this month is is um, English Day. English Day? What's English Day? <laughs> George's Day. Oh. And that's the last day to put your potatoes in. Okay, well, we'll get them in. Okay, we're home and I'm sewing courgettes. <laughs> I've actually decided that I'm using the um, Rocket Grow seed and potting compost that I just sewed the carrots into. Um, although I was a bit suspect about it going for carrots because carrots are so fine. Because I'm about to sow all the cucurbits which have all got big seeds, I think it's gonna be perfect. So I've mixed it with a bit of vermiculite, ready to go. I've actually already filled my pots up. How pro am I? <laughs> <laughs> but all I'm going to do is just talk you through the varieties that I'm doing this year. It's not wildly different from last year, I've just got a couple of extras. And I know it seems like uh, I've been saying I'm going to sew my courgettes, I'm going to sew my courgettes like for weeks. I mean, you can sew them all the way up till May. It's not, uh, it's not like we're running late with them, uh, it's just that I was excited to get them in and I kept mentioning it and then never did it, which isn't really the way to go. But anyway, now is the moment. So let's start with courgettes. I am doing three varieties of courgette this year. So two of the varieties I'm doing are from Frankie Seeds. One is a plain green one, which is just called Verde d'Italia, and then a stripy one, which is called Striata. So basically Italian striped and Italian green. Uh, a bit of an Italian theme going on at the moment because the third one actually came from Italy. I picked it up in the market and it's a white, like an ivory white courgette and it was everywhere in the markets, like for sale as a, as a fruit rather than the seeds. <laughs> um, so these are the three that I'm doing. I've got a plain green, a stripy and a white. Once again, I'm not growing any yellow courgettes. I don't actually really like the flavour of them. And although they look fantastic, there's just no point growing something because it looks nice, unless that's your main aim, like a flower. <laughs> I'm also doing two shorties. I'm doing one patty pan, which is called Patterson Gagat. I grow this one every year. I originally got a free packet of seed for this one off the front of Grow Your Own magazine, I think it was. Uh, it's just a dark green fruit, such a good variety, such a great flavour and a really reliable plant. And I'm also doing a round courgette. I wasn't wildly impressed with this last year, but I think that was mainly because it just didn't cope with the heat very well and we didn't get much off it. So I'm giving it another go this year and hopefully it will prove me wrong. Also in a similar vein, I am growing the tromboncino again this year. I loved this. Mum wasn't convinced, I have to admit. <laughs> uh, and I wasn't wild about them as a, uh, like a winter squash because you can pick these as very small, uh, like baby courgettes or like normal size courgettes, or you can leave them on there and let them harden up and use them as a winter squash. Just not that keen on that. Although they looked really fun on the plant, I just, I thought they were delicious when they were very, very young, maybe only about this long. Less keen on them when they were sort of this sort of size and even less keen when they were uh, cured for winter. So I am growing them again. Sorry, mum, but we're gonna eat them young. Also growing three winter squash, proper winter squash, not tromboncino style winter squash. <laughs> All three I've grown before. I don't know if you remember last year, actually was it last year? I grew like a mashed potato squash and I've grown sort of blue Hungarian and, and I don't like pumpkin soup. I'm just gonna throw it out there. I don't like it. Same way I don't like parsnip soup. <laughs> it's just too sweet, don't like it. And so it's just like personal preference. We prefer a smaller pumpkin than sort of some sort of massive beast. The Hungarian blues that we grew a couple of years ago, they were so huge. We just never ended up eating them. Like each one we'd cut a slice out of and then it would go and that was it. Never, never actually managed to eat a whole one. So we're not ever doing that one again. But the four that we are doing, reasonable sized little chaps. Ujikukuri, again, we grew this last year and we only got two, I think I grew three plants. We only got two proper size Ujikukuri off them, but they were delicious. So we're gonna have another go at them. Also, one for every single year, Crown Prince. Personally, I think this is the finest tasting uh, winter squash, pumpkin, whatever you wanna call it. I love it. It's a good size, it's perfect. The flesh is absolutely delicious. Number three is Marina de Chioggia. 
Chilvia, Chilvia, I think it is. We've tried this one a couple of years running. Now I've eaten one of these that somebody else grew. <laughs> a guy, like a few allotments up from ours grew these and gave us like a wedge of it and it was utterly delicious. I've tried this for the last two years and not actually managed to get much of a fruit. I got one last year. Um, it was about this big, but it was sort of undersized and it never really got this beautiful kind of, you know, gnarly green skin on it. So I'm having a third go at these because beautiful, beautiful pumpkin. And we ummed and ahed about whether or not we were going to do a butternut squash, but we've decided we're going to. It's just the bog standard Waltham butternut. We're going to put that one in too. So that chaps are the pumpkins for this year. It's possible that I might throw a few more in. We're not in any hurry to get them all in now. And I have got a couple of other sort of more interesting varieties. I've sort of got one that's called sweet dumpling and I've got another mashed potato type squash, but we haven't kind of discussed them or worked out where on earth we're gonna be growing them. So I'm gonna leave those ones for the moment, stick with the three that I know for sure we're sowing and uh, kind of revisit the winter squash situation a bit later on. And finally, also putting the cucumbers in. So I put those two Socrates cucumbers in in January. They're looking fantastic. They're about sort of this big now and they're producing cucumbers, which is really nice. Unfortunately, they haven't been able to go down into the conservatory yet. So this time last year, they were growing away really happily in the conservatory in their big size pots. But this year it's just been that much colder that they haven't been able to get down there yet. So they're sort of crammed up in my office under lights, which isn't ideal. So I'm hoping to be able to get them out, not outside, but like out of my office fairly shortly. I was going to sow Socrates again and have some at the allotment and some at home, but then I thought that's a bit of a waste really. Um, we're going to have quite limited space in the greenhouse and the polytunnel, considering we've got so many tomatoes and we don't really know what we're doing about where we're going to be putting them, all the peppers, all the chilies. So just growing double of something just seemed a bit silly. So I've gone for three other varieties. One of them is this one. So Socrates is a really short, stumpy, like picnic size cucumber. And this is sort of the opposite. It's a really, really long, skinny one. And I've never grown this before. This is the first year for this. It is uh, long Chinese, but I've heard really, really nice things about this cucumber. So I'm really looking forward to that. And the two other ones that I'm growing are little short round chaps. I've got green apple, which we grew last year, which was really, really tasty, but we only got one fruit off it last year. Again, it was a real casualty of the weather. And we also have one that's called, oh, that's upside down. <laughs> we have one that's called lemon. So Johanna was in California recently visiting a friend and she picked up these seeds for me. So that's pretty exciting. So that chaps is the three cucumbers. It will be four varieties all in all, including the little Socrates that we're keeping at home. So like I said, I have already filled up my seed pots. I've even written out my labels already. Ooh. <laughs> I'm gonna sow two of each. Um, I'm probably not gonna want two of each apart from maybe the courgettes, but I was only planning on growing four plants of the courgettes and I now have more varieties after picking up that white one in Italy, but they just look so good in the marketplace that I just I really fancied it. So uh, I've got more courgettes than I want, but anyway, I'm gonna be sowing two of everything in the hope that we get two, but if we only get one, it's not the end of the world. And because it's so early in the season really for sowing them, if none come up of a particular variety, uh, either I just write it off or I'll have another go at sowing them because we've got till like halfway through May. They grow so quickly. It's not gonna be a problem with time constraints. Do you see what I mean about uh, cucurbit seeds being really big? And this is a bit like the broad beans. If you plant them flat in the ground like that, they've got a much higher chance of rotting out. So you tend to plant them like slim side down like that so that they've got less chance of rotting out. So if you just pinch them on the flat edge and push them straight into the soil, you should have a better chance.
I've got four gaps at the end there unused and they are for uh, my chocha seeds. So I've got two different varieties of a chocha this year. I have got the one that I grow every year, which is some saved, saved seed, which is a very smooth, sort of about that long sort of variety. And I've also got a giant Bolivian a chocha. Uh, which are going to go in there, two of each. However, the achocha don't fit into any of my labelled trays, like, you know, because they're all labelled in uh, like carrots, parsnips, etc, etc. And I don't have a tray specifically for achocha. And I have merged them with something else. And I can't remember which one. I've been through all my drawers, I can't find them. But I know that I've got two packets somewhere. So I'm just going to leave those for the minute and uh, go and have a bit of a route around and see if I can find them. Anyway, cucurbits are in. That really does feel like spring. That rhymed, that was nice. So I don't know if you remember, I haven't included melons in that lot because I sowed them about, what, three weeks ago? Um, and I can show you what they're looking like now. I haven't had the best germination, but I do have two of each. So the uh, two types of melon I was growing is Minnesota Midget and Sugar Baby. Um, I sowed four of each and I've got two. So that's not too bad. Uh, I think four melon plants is easily enough for me, what with all the cucumbers, because these are going to have to go in the greenhouse too, so I'm not unhappy with that. Oh no, there are actually some slow chaps, you see that one's just coming up too, so I will have a few to give away, which is nice, because everybody loves a melon. <laughs> anyway, that is me for today, chaps. I will see you when the sun comes out, and I'm going to talk about all the other things that I'm going to sow in April. The list is long. The list is long. It is Friday and the weather forecast did not lie. It's beautiful. And the first job of the morning is to find a home for the sweet peas that are desperate in the greenhouse. They are going so long and sad. They just need to go out. But this kind of thing takes a lot of negotiation and uh, discussion. So this is where we are starting the morning.
growing anything up a teepee or an arch, uh, where the arch is leaning over like that, you plant on the inside rather than the outside because obviously the plant goes straight up and hits it immediately. You, so you don't need to tie them in if you plant them out here. I don't know if you can even see this. The screen is so bright and the sun shines. I'm just going on faith here. If you're growing them on the outside of the lean, then you have to tie them in and then they're constantly trying to grow up straight that way and without hitting the thing. But because I've netted those two teepees, uh, I don't really have an opportunity to grow them on the inside. So I'm going to grow them on the outside and just trust that that is so desirable to cling to that they're going to cling to it all the way up although I will probably need to tie them in to get them started. Although I have pinched these sweet peas out twice since they came up I've left them in there for so long that they've just got really really tangled and rather than try and untangle them and risk snapping the stems and making a real hash of it I'm just chopping them all off at about four or five inches above and I'm going to plant them like that. They'll recover no worries they just produce loads more growth it's a bit like topping them again. Uh, but rather than trying to pull them apart, you know, and breaking them and pulling them out of the soil, I'm just going to go for this way because I think it's going to cause less damage to them than um, pulling them around. Obviously, the answer would have been to get them out before this stage. <laughs> And there we have them. Sweet peas are in at last. Had to hack them right back, but they won't be uh, bothered by that. They will be just fine. So I've put this green netting on here. Just gives them something to scrabble up. You know what I was talking about with the raspberry canes and um, that rather than just trying to get them, the peas to grow up the straight canes where they just have to grip on and it's a bit slippy, giving them something that's a little bit more scrabbly. It's just much easier for them. The moment they get their uh, tendrils attached to that netting, they'll just rock it straight up. So yes, two little guards on either side of the netting shed. And while I've been messing around with the peas, uh, mum has been moving the strawberry plants into the asparagus bed. So we're trialing this kind of growing strawberries and asparagus in the same bed because this is a huge bed and it's really only productive for kind of six weeks of the year, which I do not think is a waste because the asparagus is the best. But I think it's worth having a go at getting a second crop out of the same space. And I think asparagus and strawberries is going to be a good match. We would put the strawberries just willy nilly throughout. So they kind of grow around the base of the asparagus, but we are going to have to try and protect them in some way. Otherwise, the squigs are going to eat all the strawberries and not us. But talking of uh, strawberry protection, the most successful way we found so far is growing them in the hanging baskets inside the fruit cage. Absolute gem. Unfortunately, last year it didn't really work out that well just because the pots themselves dried out so quick in that 40 degree heat. And we would have just had to stand there 24 hours a day watering them to keep up. So unfortunately, we didn't get anything from them last year. But the year before was a raging success. So we are going to do exactly the same again this year. We've actually got three fantastic macrame hangers in the fruit cage who were sent to us incredibly kindly by Kim who made them out of like old rope that she found on the beach up where she lives. So yeah, double whammy, absolutely excellent. They look beautiful and the strawberries are free of squirrels and mice and rats and anything else that wants to get hold of them. So yeah, absolutely excellent. Hopefully we're not living in a furnace this summer and we actually get some strawberries from them. Dinner tonight. You don't, they won't be too tough, do you? I don't think so. I think they'll be perfect. Okay.
Okay, well, we haven't got an enormous amount done on camera this morning, uh, but I have managed to pick some mustard greens. They have done so well in there, all over winter, chugging away. Did you see the pak choy? Don't they look good? So this was the bed that had the red ones and the green ones in it. It had two varieties of green ones in it, actually. Um, and the red and the green both bolted, or they did nothing over winter, and then as soon as it warmed up, they bolted. Um, that variety, absolutely brilliant. Unfortunately, do I know which one of the green varieties it was? No, I do not. <laughs> but it was one of them. Anyway, yeah, we're gonna actually stop for some lunch. We're gonna go home for lunch. Uh, normally on a day like this, we would stay up here, but I've got to pick up some bits and pieces. I need the strimmer battery and I need the drill because I've got something to fix down there. So we are going to take this opportunity to go home, have something to eat, and then we'll be back this afternoon. I know it seems like I didn't do a lot this morning, but a lot of the stuff I was doing wasn't filmed, just so you know. <laughs> I didn't get sucked in by the swing seat and just not move, I promise. Um, we did a lot of discussing about uh, what we're going to do with the arches, because the arches along that edge, the weed issue is just getting a bit on top of us. Uh, so we did a lot of talking about that and I did a lot of sorting out in the greenhouse. We've just got so much to do, so much to do, although tomorrow, oh I've got mud. Although tomorrow is supposed to be gorgeous as well, so we will have tomorrow too. Ready? Yes. Okay. Oh, chin is chaps. Happy April. April, the manic sewing month. So that's like my first week of sewing out the way. I've got a list about a mile long of things to sow. Oh, I have just found my achocha seed that I was supposed to be sowing the same time as the courgettes. Just found it. For some reason, I've put it in the sweet corn drawer. Don't know. It's clearly completely unrelated to sweet corn, but never mind. So I'm going to get that into those couple of empty pots that I left when I was doing the courgettes. And next week's sewing, I've got some things that I'm really quite excited about sewing next week. And it's going to be a whole load of spinachy type things and a lot of them I have never grown before. So I've got things like Malbar spinach, I've got Caucasian spinach, I've got tree spinach. So none of these things are actually a true spinach but using the word spinach as in like something that you would you would eat like a spinach. Um, so yeah I'm gonna be trying a whole load of them. It seems to work out that way doesn't it? Every year like you find one thing that you kind of go down a rabbit hole with and grow all these different types. Like I did it with pumpkins a couple of years ago. I had about 10 different types of pumpkin and I found out of them like two maybe out of the whole lot that I was like yeah I'll definitely be growing this again and every year you try out new things and like I would say what well, on average maybe 80% of them are things you're a bit like mm, it's probably a reason this isn't particularly well known <laughs> but I've got really high hopes for some of these spinach varieties and I love leafy greens so fingers crossed for some of them and that's all going to be next week also this month is big bean month so getting all the beans in uh, i'm going to be getting the second load of broad beans in next week i think um probably not my french beans and my runner beans and stuff because um i might leave it till the end of the month for that although the weather forecast oof, is looking fine not this week that's coming now but like the week after it's going to be like 20 degrees in sunshine i do hope they're not lying so two things. I said last week that this was going to be a plot tour, as well as me doing a lot of seed sowing. And actually, uh, I have filmed the plot tour, but I mean, this video is already however long and a plot tour is going to be another half an hour. So it certainly wasn't going to tack onto this end, but I am going to edit it up and hopefully I'll put it out in the middle of the week. So there'll be like a bonus episode. This time of year, you just can't fit stuff like that into the vlog because it's just so busy. There's just so much to film and do. <laughs> It's not like the middle of the winter where you're like scrabbling around for something. Now it's like, oh my God, what can I not film? Because there's just too much to get on with. But what I did completely forget about this week, it was Easter. It just seemed to completely pass me by. Like obviously I have noticed that there's Easter eggs in the shops and things, but I hadn't actually kind of twigged what weekend Easter actually was. And um, I've had... Uh, the Easter eggs. Do you remember last year I did like an Easter egg hunt? I, I actually did like the proper Easter egg hunt was for um, my Patreons, but I, like everybody else joined in anyway. 
uh, I completely forgot about it and I've got all those eggs just waiting to go. So we're going to have to have a, an out of season Easter egg hunt at some time, chaps. It's going to be probably end of April. I'm sure you can still have Easter at the end of April. We'll do that. We're going to have to have a, like a pretend Easter episode because I don't know what I was doing this week, but I certainly didn't realise it was Easter. And yeah, that is about it, chaps. Um, although, tomorrow morning, something quite exciting is happening and I'm just going to put the tiniest little teaser at the end of the video for it, uh, which is going to be all in next week's vlog. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's cheers. Cheers to Patreon on a Monday, the Monday Clubbers, and cheers to everybody else on the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday that you may be watching. Uh, I hope you're having an excellent start to April. Even though the weather has been a little bit dodgy, we've had some right cracking days the last week and looking at that forecast, it's gonna go very soon, very soon. It's gonna be like barbecue weather, flip-flops, sunglasses, tomatoes, fresh lettuces, cucumbers. Yeah, it's all, it's all coming, it's all coming. Right, chaps. Cheers. Sneak peek of next week. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. <laughs>